2 minutes 18 seconds since we hit the birds. In the seconds before touching down, Jeff intuitively knew what to do and began calling out to me airspeed and altitude in a cadence to help me judge the height at which to begin raising the nose of the aircraft to reduce the rate of descent for the landing. We hit the river, and while the impact was hard, I could tell the airplane was intact and floating. Jeff and I turned to each other and almost in unison said, that wasn't as bad as I thought, but there was no high-fiving. Though we'd solved the first and the biggest problem of the day, getting the airplane down intact, there was still a perilous evacuation and rescue ahead of us. While Jeff went through the evacuation checklist, I opened the cockpit door and shouted one word, evacuate. Passengers began filing out onto the wings and into the rafts at the front doors. The back doors could not be used because the door sills were below the water line. The aft rafts were useless. It was January in New York on the frigid Hudson River. The air temperature was 21 degrees, 11 with the wind chill. The water temperature was 36. When it seemed everyone was out of the cabin, I walked down the aisle shouting for anyone else to come forward. I walked up and down twice to be sure no one would be left behind. Finally, I grabbed the emergency locator transmitter, the aircraft maintenance logbook, and my overcoat and exited the airplane into a raft. The evacuation took about three and a half minutes. The first ferry arrived within three minutes, 58 seconds of touching down, and by the time I left the aircraft as the last one off, the rescue was well underway. I tried desperately to get a count of people in the rafts and on the wings, but it was impossible. It wouldn't be until four hours later that I would get the final count. I realized my cell phone was dry. I called our airline's operations center to tell them what had happened. The airline operations manager who answered abruptly told me he couldn't talk to me because they had a plane down in the Hudson. I said, I know. I'm the guy. My next call was to Lori at home. She wasn't yet aware of our accident. I told her I was okay, that I couldn't talk. I had other duties to perform, but that I would call her again later. Naturally, she was shocked and she went to pick up our girls at school. Some of the passengers had been taken to the New Jersey side of the river, some to New York. I was desperate for a count of all who'd been rescued. The crew, including myself, was taken to the hospital to be evaluated. I was still in my wet uniform, but I was anxiously awaiting the final count of passengers and crew. Finally, more than four hours after our landing, I received the number I was looking for, 155. All aboard survived and were accounted for. Only then could I relax, but I was so emotionally spent, all I could do was feel the most enormous sense of relief I had ever felt. It was as if the weight of the universe had been lifted off my heart. We hadn't saved the plane, but every life was spared. What followed it the days and weeks after the landing was nothing short of extraordinary. We heard from people all over the world who found hope and inspiration in the story of Flight 1549. Many saw it as a hopeful bookend to a decade that started in New York with the 9-11 attacks. We heard from the daughter of a Holocaust survivor. Her father had witnessed our landing. She said she learned from him that to save one life is to save the world. We heard from people who had lost loved ones in other plane accidents and were touched by our story. Jeff and I have felt an enormous responsibility to use the greater voice this event has given us for good in every way we could for as long as we could, and we're not done yet. I'll continue to advocate for the safety of the traveling public, for aviation safety, and for safety in every industry. Fifteen years later, there are many things that stay with me. The professionalism of the crew, the bravery of the passengers, the diligence of air traffic controllers, rescuers, and first responders, the enduring love of my family. Those are the things I celebrate every day.